And we are back. This is Dear Woke Christian, the podcast. And today, is this is a live. This is something different. I'm sitting down with an actual subscriber, sitting down with a brother in the Lord I've met through this platform. And we're just going to sit down and chop it up and talk about what I call the fantastic fanatic fallout. What happened to Brady Goodwin? And so before I go too far, if you don't mind, down in the comments below, tell us where you're from. Tell us where you're at. Um, all that kind of good stuff. If you are a YouTube content creator, I would love to shout you out as well. So please put your channel down there um, with that asterisk as well as um, I'm leaving my email there. If you're interested in emailing me, my guest, I'll be putting his YouTube, his YouTube, I'll be putting up his Instagram in a moment. But before we go too far, I want to introduce you all to my new brother in the Lord, Reformed Tosin. Welcome to the channel, my friend. What's good, Jason? How you doing? Mighty fine, mighty fine. All right, give us your bona fides. Tell us who you are, where you're from, all that kind of good jazz. I'm Brandon Wallace. I'm from Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, I've been saved probably about 13, 14 years now. And the Lord's been gracious this whole time. I love it. Thank you, man. Well, we were talking in the comment section. I don't remember when, but we were talking about some of the things that we've been seeing in the, in the Christian hip hop genre. And um, I shot you my email, say, hey, Reform Tosa, let's get together, let's talk about it. And you reached out to me, so I wanted to welcome you onto the show because today we're going to be talking about Brady Goodwin and what actually, what we've extracted from his um, his deconversion, his denunciation of the Christian faith. I want to talk a little bit more about that, dig into that a little bit more. Um, Brandon and I have been looking at various videos um, responding to him, members of the cross movement that have responded to him, as well as, get this in, there we go, as well as people have analyzed what happened to him. So we, we, we have a nice presentation today, so we definitely don't want you to think that it's just going to be us jibber-jabbering, but we have a lot to talk about. But um, give us a skinny before we dive into the actual, what we're going to talk about today. Brandon, what actually happened to Brady Goodwin? Uh, Brady denounced his faith probably about a week ago. Uh, a long time uh, form, uh, Christian hip hop artist that's been around, cross movement started around probably like 96, 97. I remember when they first came out and I was like a young kid growing up in the church and mom always trying to find alternatives to like secular hip hop. So she gave me cross movement. I remember listening to, uh, what is that song? Elohim by... Mm -hmm by um by him on the first hope heaven's mentality album and that yeah. holy 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 verse that, house of representatives even, yeah. yeah house of reps too yeah like, because even shy even redid a verse on one of his albums that yep. fanatic oh God, what did i say yep yeah 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 so it's just like a long like it's just like it's a sad thing to see him just denounce his faith and but we can get more into that in a minute oh absolutely so um just giving a shout out to some of the uh, those who are in the comment section. Thank you all very much. Uh, thank you all for watching the video that I did on Wednesday regarding this topic. Hopefully, um, Brandon and I can add a little bit more light to it. Uh, hey there, Charlene. And um, there were some questions I even had, and Brandon helped me. So we're going to talk about that because I had some questions about, um, you know, how do we move forward from here as if you're... A, cross movement fan and such like that. So we, we kind of parsed through that yesterday. So I'm feeling much better about it, but, uh, yeah. Um, good brother Pookie. What's happening? Pookie and them. Good to see you, man. We know where this guy's from. We know where he's from down the street and around the corner. I know where you are, man. Uh, we're supposed to be getting together for burgers. Uh, now this right here, uh, Brandon, we, we're international brother. Eric is we're international, man. I don't know about you. I don't know if you knew that. What you doing up? It's like one o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> Dude, you converted that quick. You are like professional. Yeah, so uh Eric is our international um uh representative here. So it's always good to see him. Always good. I don't know what time he sleeps, so I'm gonna be honest with you, because he's forever <laughs> he's forever on the chat. So I don't know when he goes to sleep. <laughs> but uh Eric, tell us what time you go to sleep, man, so we can kind of figure that out. I don't know, Pookie. I don't think it's cold. It ain't cold, cold here. 
I don't know, man. Uh, Go yes, on. yes, thank you. Somebody asked. Now, I don't have Tosin, I have he does not have a channel idea. yet. So go to IG and here's his Instagram and tell him, get on YouTube. Tell him to do it. <laughs> tell him to do it. Say, do it. All right, Susie, it's good to see you. Thank you so much. All right, so let's jump on into this, man. Let's get on into it. So as we're unpacking this situation that um, Brady Goodwin denouncing his faith, um, when Brandon and I first kind of got started, we're like, well, where do, where do we want to start? Where would we start in this? And the first thing we said is, hey, let's talk about the biblical definition, the biblical understanding of salvation. Because I think that will really lay a good groundwork. Is that fair, Brandon? Yes. Yeah, that will lay a good groundwork for where we go from here. Like, you know, hey, how do you know you're saved? And then, of course, then we'll talk about how do you turn your back on it. But so uh, go ahead, Brandon. So like the Lord says, he says, not unless you be born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. And yes. you see, not unless you're born of the spirit and water that you will not be as uh be born again so like when you read ezekiel 36 uh 22 onward uh, we see that these are new covenant promises to christians about how one is regenerate and brought to in, into the household of god so i'm going to read ezekiel 36 he says therefore house of israel thus says the lord god it is not for your sake O house of israel that i am i'm about to act but for the sake of my holy name which you have profaned among the nations which uh, to which you came. And I will vindicate my holiness and my great name, which you have profaned among the nations, which the Lord God, when through you, I vindicated my holiness before their eyes. I, I will take you from the land and I will sprinkle clean water on you. Mm-hmm. So you see that God first separates us from the world and takes us yes. out of the world and cleanses us by the blood of Christ, right? He says, he says, and you, you shall clean, uh, clean you, I will clean you from uncleanliness and from all your idols, and I will cleanse you, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. We need a new heart and a new spirit because the heart, heart we have now is corrupt and wicked yes. and depraved, and so mm-hmm. we need a new spirit within us that will activate and will uh, actually listen to adhere to the word of God. You know, I will put, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will obey my ordinances. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I will deliver you from all uncleanliness, and I will cause, I will summon the grain and make it abundant, clear, and lay no famine upon you. I will make the fruit of the tree to increase in the field abundant that you may never again suffer disgrace of famine among the nations. Then you will remember that your evil ways and your deeds, and they were not good, and you will loathe yourselves for your iniquity and your abominations. So there's no reason for me to believe that I'm uh, I'm the, the genesis of my own salvation from there. I think it's fair to say, from there, that the Lord is the one that actually does that process. So as we're looking at Brady Goodwin, as we're looking at somebody who has turned himself, turned away from the faith, where do, where do you go with that, my friend? I, as I, as I reflect on like biblical prop, uh, apostasy, right. And think mm-hmm. about like, if the Lord rock, did a work within someone, right. There's, there's, at times, as a Christian, we stumble in trans, into sin and transgressions. But the, the the complete, utter renouncement of the Lord, we don't really see that very much in Scripture at all. Like, without the Lord, if we're His, He's going to providentially draw us yes. back to Himself. And, and the fact that Brady's still standing firm in his convictions of not wanting to stand in faith as a testament that he's basically apostatized. And it may, it reminds me of the scripture from um, Hebrews 6. Okay. And because um, this is a warning that the writer, writer of Hebrews gives us. 
and not and in proceed not becoming dull as he says in in chapter uh, hebrews 5 he says not mm -hmm. coming dull of hearing and re having to relearn elementary principles of of how to be saved how, yeah. how to be saved laying the foundations of pen repentance to dead works and so on and so forth but when he says when you see in ver uh, hebrews 6 4 for in the case of those who have been once enlightened and having tasted of the heavenly gift and having become partakers of the Holy Spirit yes. and having tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come and have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance since they again crucified themselves, the son of God, and put him to open shame. But this next part is very pivotal, right? Because verse 7 says for the ground that drinks the rain which often falls on it and brings forth vegetation is useful to those for whose sake it is tilled receives a blessing from god but if the if it yields thorns and thistles it is unfit and close to being close to being cursed and its end is to be burned in a parallel scripture that is john 15 right yep. like you say okay. I, I am in the vine i am the vine you are the branches. the branches everybody in me if you abide in me you will bear much fruit right if you abide, mm -hmm. you're going to continue to bear fruit my father prunes you and you or in the other some translations may have prune as cleanse because my yep. the word that cleanses you um he says all those who do not bear fruit my father takes out and, ca and uh, cast them aside cast and into the eternal fire. So yeah. it's like you see this, these parallels that someone can be so close in faith, right? Mm -hmm. When having such great biblical enlightenment, becoming partakers of the Holy Spirit, people struggle with that verse because the fact that like, how can someone become partakers of the Holy Spirit if they're supposed to be saved? But mm -hmm. that is dealing with partakers in the sense of having fellowship with the body. Like Do they're coming to church, they're having mm -hmm. the scene, or if the first century sense, they're seeing the miracles and the miraculous mm -hmm. happen, and they're becoming partakers in that sense. And they tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. When you when you sit under biblical uh, preaching over and over again, it can restrain your wickedness to a certain extent, but not save you. I like for it. Long, for, so I'm saying so like you can adhere to the like as like the uh, scribes and Sadducees, they adhere mm -hmm. to the word of God. It had a, a restraining factor upon their consciences to the point they became legalistic. But like if you if they but at the same time, it had a restraining uh, factor on their brain as like Romans 2 talks about. Yeah. Right. Like when it says those who do what the uh, was on conscience and not the word that's written on conscience, they're the ones that's the true Jews. And it's fair to say that we see that in the disciples. We see that Judas ran with them. I mean, Judas was was sent out to preach. Judas did all these things. I don't have it on. I mean, we do see that the disciples were doing, were preaching, were doing mm -hmm. signs and miracles, and they didn't say everybody but Judas. So we see that he was clearly in the midst of them. But as we all know, he was not a believer. And so the the idea that you can be so close, and I, I even go as far to say you can perform really great, biblically sound Christian rap and be so close and yet still miss. How do you feel about that? Or what do you, you agree or what do you got? It's it's just sad, dude. It's just oh, overall most sure. sad and it brings grief grieving to like people to my heart and mind because like someone like because that's especially growing up in the inner city right and mm -hmm. i'm talking about growing up in the, in the 90s when it's rough have, like heavy drugs and all that other stuff and mm -hmm. when you hear and when i'm hearing cross moving i was not perverted as a kid but what i'm saying like just hearing that positive message growing up oh, in yeah. church was so influent influent excuse me influential upon my life absolutely absolutely and, and even to the, like today, I've like befriended like the tonic and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. but like, but it's just like so sad, man. And it's just, I'm just praying the Lord brings him back if he truly is. But 
it's just it's just hard to fathom like like how can you leave our lord you know what i mean like he's so good and gracious absolutely and we're going to get into because um in my video there was a question of what was grady's beef what was the issue what did he find as a problem and actually tosin and i kind of we found a little bit more of that so i know in my video i said i think he was just trying to um trying to get you interested in buying his book but we actually found him explaining what it is so we'll put that up and we'll discuss that in a moment because though both toast both brandon and i agree these are not reasons that you would turn from our lord not the one who saved you, not the one that's been so gracious and kind to you. And I think you'll probably see that as well. But um, so we kind of laid out the groundwork, like what is biblical salvation? So then now, Brandon, we said, hey, we're going to talk about what did he actually do? Like what is what has Brady done? Kind of like, you know, your mom comes running downstairs because she heard something crash. What have you done? Well, what did he do? Go ahead, my friend. He he denied the Lord. That, and that's it's not just the not denying of like the faith, but he's denying God himself. Yes. Of the glory that he sees fit through the means of this. You know what I mean? So like even like like even like through vessels, like as Romans 9 says, God glorifies himself through vessels of de of destruction. Mm-hmm. And even like even through Judas, the gospel was preached, and God used that as a means of saving people. Yes. Like, but it's a great evil, a great, great evil. It's a spit in the face of God to have great comprehension of who God is, what He does on behalf of sinners, mm -hmm. and you spit in that face and said, "I don't need that." And it, and it shows how wicked and depraved man truly is and how much sin has touched every aspect of our lives. And it shows how much more of a savior we need and how much more of the gospel we need. Yes. And and, it, and just like, as I reflect, even more reflect upon it, like I think of like, like it's, it's the ultimate blasphemy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, because like the fact that like he even said is in an apocalypse video, like he's he's went to seminary, Westminster, mm -hmm. very, a very, very theologically sound seminary. One of the last ones in in the U.S. Yes. And he's basically spit, spitting in the face of them saying, I have all the answers. I know more than you. And. And I'm the, and the scripture, scripture speaks of this. Like they they follow they, in becoming wise, they became fools. They think and they have all this knowledge and they and wherewithal, but they really don't. Right, right. And I, I'll even take it a, a layer lower. Yes, he spit in the face of his seminary classmates and professors and whatnot. What did he do to his church and his his small group? Like, I mean. That his accountability group, I believe, is what it's called in his uh, in his video. Like, I don't know how accountable they were holding you, but still, like, again, the, you are spitting in their face. You're saying, I know more than you. I don't need what we have signed up for. And man, what how how arrogant, how prideful, how boastful that I I have the I know everything. I don't need Christ. I'm good. And man, that is a uh, to say it is sounds like is, is serious. To believe it is even worse, though. I'm like, good gracious, like, how far have you gone? Um, and I mean, we we discussed you and I talked about it a little bit. Some of the things that we believe led to this. Um, you know, he talks about how he, he in his video he talks about how he wasn't reading his word. I, I'm like, I don't know how you're in an accountability small group and y'all are not in the word. But he said he hadn't been reading, hadn't read the word. For like five years, like I'm like sorry, deep, that's he said deeply. Yeah, yeah. He said, like devotion. Maybe, maybe deeply. Maybe that's scriptures. maybe that's maybe deeply is what I missed, and I I might have missed that then. So, but prayerfully I was. That, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't get that. Like you're in seminary, and you're oh, yeah. supposed to be diving into the text, 
<laughs> constantly and you're sitting there like oh i didn't read it today for, uh, yeah it's about for the feeding of his own soul the heavenly manna you know what i mean so it is pretty um uh wait wait hold on someone yeah i didn't i didn't mean to so we dove into this video as well we we watched this when we watched his and um yeah it was good it was good um i told brand i just thought it was long i was like man he should have got to the point a lot quicker but uh no no and when you think about it man these are these are people that have been with this man for in excess of 20 years okay. so we're talking about yeah he yeah he said 30 but i don't know how long so let's just say let's just say 20 to you know call it even and so i mean that's that's all of your elementary middle high school and even your college career y'all been friends for that long i mean i i, I weep for that man like you these are your friends yeah. and they have to watch you turn your back not on turn your back on the college not turn your back on your hometown turn your back on the savior that we've been singing and proclaiming and and preaching about for 30 years together man that's serious yeah like that's and this should be heed a warning for christians right yeah not to absolutely the means of grace and like constantly being in fellowship with one another reading praying not just oh skimming through things i'm talking about reading to seek sort the things that's your innermost tur turmoils and fix those things through the grace of christ and through his word amen all right so before we jump into what we found as his uh reasons i guess you uh you ready for an answer a question i thought this was pretty good you ready sure all right, here we go. How could parents with children better disciple their own children to help them not lose their faith as an adult? I got I got my answer. Fast you ready? Or, say again. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. <laughs> Cause, cause, cause it's only the, the grips of Christ upon a soul that yes. keeps them, not the, the grips of the parents forcing theology and religion upon them it is the grips of the, the triune god holding fast of the soul that's going to sustain them mm -hmm. so that's just pray the lord saves them like and the lord will keep them until the end amen i will only i will add a practical sense as well as a parent your kids need to see you actually taking your faith seriously as a parent my kids, I think my kid is on the, I think she's on the chat somewhere. She might be. Anyway, um, they need to see, they need to see that mommy and daddy, Mark, are serious about their faith. Like dad is not just going to church to check a box. Mom is not just going, um, you know, saying prayers, you know, headache prayers over dinner. But they need to see that you're serious. And I think the more that they see that you're serious, as well as what Brandon just said, I think that the practical aspect is see like, yeah, this is actually serious to mom and dad. And I, um, I even joke about the fact, like, that's why I, I like the fact that my church sings hymnals because they can hear that dad can't sing worth two cents and he, he sings horribly, but he will, he, he won't sing around the house. Uh, he won't, except for that bad video I did on my channel, he won't sing around the house, but dad will sing and make a joyful noise to his Lord and savior. I think those are just the practical ways to do it. Uh, but go ahead, Brandon. The other thing you can do is get a, the children's catechism. Yes. Um, I don't know the ages of your children, but the children's catechism is like a concise theological question. like, who made you? God made me. What else did God make? All the things. Like, I you, things. you constantly go through those things, those theological questions, but they don't just have the questions. They have the word, word behind it where you can sit there and say, okay, now God created all things. Where is that in scripture? Genesis 1, Colossians 1. Like so on mm -hmm. and so forth, and then you can teach you're teaching the script theology and scriptures at the same time to your children Amen. to help them have and, and read the Pilgrim's Progress with them as well. Hey, Pilgrim's Progress! I wonder if I've uh, seen that. I might have to go pick that up somewhere. I don't need to pick up anymore. I, I have a John Bunyan um, habit, so I actually I think I have just about everything John Bunyan wrote back here behind me, and I think I have like four copies of Pilgrim's Progress. But don't tell anybody. 
I, I, I like that book, man. It's a great book. Um, and there's a lot of replies to that, Mark. Um, lots of people chiming in in the chat. So hopefully you can, um, well, not hopefully, I know you will find some um, some good solutions to that. And um, all right, let's look into this. So um, hopefully I can pull this up correctly. Everybody pray for you, boy. Okay, got it. All right, great. So this is Brady Goodwin's YouTube channel. And no, no I'm sorry. Malone's. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. This is Vocab Malone's YouTube channel. So we'll just go up here real quick and make it normal again, which I can't do because reasons. <laughs> All right. So this is Vocab Malone's YouTube channel. And he's done quite a few videos in response to um, Brady Goodwin's denunciation of the Christian faith. Vocab Malone is very big into not only Christian hip hop, but urban apologetics, particularly with um, with a bend toward Hebrew Israelites, black Hebrew Israelites. So he's he's definitely um, he's not just a, a new jack or a grifter in this. So he did a video and Brady Goodwin replied to him. And uh, can you see that? OK, Brandon? Yes. OK. Um, and we thought it was really interesting because he gives he tells why he gives a good reasons why. So I'll just uh, I'll jump in. Appreciate that. I never got the sense that the issues you were raising were regarding textual criticisms. And I'll stop right there. You want to tell us what textual criticisms are, Brandon? Uh, textual criticisms are when you compile the manuscripts of, of the scripture, and sometimes there's nuances that the scribes will put in there to give help help readers with understanding. So sometimes that's why some Bibles omit certain things in, in the scriptures. So they're mm -hmm. like, okay, they're like, let's take John five, right? Uh, the first, I think it's three or four verses in some Bibles are omitted because it doesn't yep. give the scribes understanding or background or commentary to what's going on in this text. So that's part of, that's part of textual criticism. Okay. So text your criticisms. All right. If I had a hunch, I'd say your issues are not rooted in textual TC, textual criticism, but rather more along the lines of higher criticism. You want to talk about higher criticism, Brandon? I don't know what that one is. <laughs> okay. So, and, and I'm not really familiar with it either. It's the documentary hypothesis. I'm not really certain I, I understood it either. And I was actually kind of secretly praying that you knew. You knew. So we'll come back to that. All right. Now, the compatibility or incongruence of the natural sciences and scripture. So we hear this all the time that scripture doesn't line up with science and natural sciences are things like uh, gravity and how air flow works and so forth. The natural sciences, things you learn like in third grade and so forth. The reliability of the hist historical accounts of scripture or rather in scripture, and the ethics and morality of some parts of scripture. Am I right? So Vocab Malone posts or rather reaches out to Brady Goodwin and says, hey, these are the reasons why I believe that you were, that you've denounced your faith. And he asked the question, am I right? And here we go. And Brad, Brad Good is Brady Goodwin. He says all of the above, including textual. So he, all of these are the reasons why he is leaving the faith. So textual criticism, um, higher criticism, natural sciences and scripture, as well as the compatibility and incongruence issues, reliability of the historical account, and of course, scriptural ethics and morality in the Bible. So those are his reasons. And I think we kind of, we kind of assume that that was it, but now he's kind of fessed up or kind of spoke up that those are his reasons why. Now, um, do you want to say what you, what, how you feeling about that, Brandon? All right. I, the doc, the documentary hypothesis is that the okay. documentary hypothesis is the models used by biblical scholars to explain the origins and the composition of the Torah. Okay. So basically so, the first five books of the Bible. So how mm -hmm. did these come about? We know from scripture that it came from Moses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... So you want to give your, your thoughts on what Brady Goodwin's issues were as it relates to um, 
what what caused him or sparked him to denounce his faith? Those those things as as stated. But the thing is, is like the the science compatibility thing. That's like because the Bible doesn't always divulge into expounding upon science. That doesn't negate mm-hmm. that science, the truth of the science. Like we That's like even in the, in the, like. We knew from the Bible year, years before that anybody figured out the earth was a spear. God said in his word in Isaiah, the despair of the earth, mm-hmm. like God given us insight upon these things. And we also know that in Romans one, science points or natural theology points to our understanding of who of that there is a God. So we see that the things created have a creator that's yes. and then therefore we have to look at special revelation in order to understand how these things are made also it doesn't negate the sciences within themselves as well like math arithmetic and studies all those things they work together mm-hmm. hand in hand and they don't like denote denote each other excuse me no i i love it i i I think it's interesting, even the argument about ethics and morality. Um, I'm going to be doing a worldview conversation with Edwin from The Proverbial Life in a couple of weeks. And we're going to discuss worldviews and how your understanding of God drives your worldview. And so if one says that they have, they don't believe in God or they say they're an atheist, then their their ethics and their worldviews really become suspect. Like, well, how do you get... How do you, where does your worldview come from? Well, I just make it up myself or I get it from a book or I get it from nature. Those things don't work. And so we're going to discuss that in a couple of weeks. And I think it's interesting that he said like the morality and ethics questions or rather the ethics and morality in some parts of scripture. I wish he, I, he, 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 Brady said exactly which morality and ethics yeah, uh, in, in regards to that, because like then you can we can really hit it on the head. Or, like, are you talking about the fact that the prophet married a prostitute and God yep. using that as a demonstration of saying, "Hey, this is what I'm like it like what it's like to be in a, in a covenant bond with people that are sinful and wicked in comparison to a holy God." Amen. But also, I, I we we kind of talked about this. I still believe that there's some social justice that's going to rear its head. And I think the morality and ethics is a good umbrella for that to be getting some shade until he's ready to pull it back and say, ah, surprise, you know, the Bible supports racism or um, white Jesus or something of that nature pops his head up. So I do, I totally agree with you. I just wish he had been more clear. And I don't believe he was any clearer in any of his interactions with vocab Malone. But um, when that pops up, if that pops up, I won't be surprised one bit. If it doesn't pop up, let me say it like that. If it doesn't pop up, I will be surprised. Or the, the permission of the, the God allowing slavery. In or or some, some yeah. modern critical race theory, wokeism yeah. as being an issue for, again, slavery or the Bible was used to... Um, um, I mean, just the different ways that people have been. I can't think of one off the top of my head for some reason. But I'm, when that pops up, I won't be surprised that it'll be something of that nature. I hope it doesn't, but I, I think that's where that morality and ethics, because you said in some parts of the Bible or some parts of Scripture. Mm-hmm. And I can see slavery being part of that. Because it. That's, that's part of everything. But I'm saying, right. like, even, even within the confines of bi- the Bible, Slavery has slave have multiple meanings in different in different contexts. And so you can't sit there and just give mm-hmm. an umbrella statement about it. Yeah. And I to me, I think that that's a again, he hasn't said it. So I'll, I'll save it. We, we will put a pin in it when he does say it. We'll jump right back on here and we'll pick right back up uh, where we are. So make sure you have that same shirt. I have mine ready. Just put it over <laughs> in the corner. As soon as he says it, we, I'm calling you. We're jumping on here. We're going to do it. But because I don't want to argue if he doesn't actually say it, maybe who knows? Maybe we'll say it, it's not about slavery, but I can see him doing it. So that's that's my thing. But um, 
No, I think that's that's a great observation, man. Did you was there anything else in here we were we were gonna point out? I can't, you remember? I can't remember, but he had some a lengthy replies. So I think that people can go read it themselves if they want to read read it in depth because it is Oh yeah, that's right. Some, that's of, the, right. some of the conversation is very extensive. And, you're right, you're right. And please keep in mind vocab Malone and Adam Coleman and several individuals are parsing through this. So it's not, so he's, he's replying to them. He's talking about, well, this person said this and so on and so forth. So yeah, it is definitely read worthy or maybe even watch the video and support vocab and their projects that they're doing over there. Um, all right. So a question that I had before we let really ask these, um, ask the viewers to give their questions is all right. So Tosin, my issue last yesterday on my video was, I don't know what to do with my my Reformed Christian rap. I got people who've done project. I got cross movement on my Reformed Christian rap playlist. I got Fanatic's projects on there. I got people doing work with Fanatic, and I didn't know what to do. I called it um, play or purge. Do I just keep playing them and enjoy them, or do I purge them off of my playlist? And I asked some people, and they had some pretty interesting ideas as well. Um, and I wanted to hear what you had to say. So, Tosin, I'm coming to you, uh, Brandon. Do I play them or do I purge them? Tell me about it. It's a two. I have a twofold answer. It's a matter of conscience. One and two. I would sit there and play them because personally, I would play them because the Bible, God, uh, Christ says, "Do as the Pharisees say, but not as they do." So they're giving giving you the word dialogue theology and giving mm -hmm. you enlightenment and an understanding of who Christ is and and, and furthering your understanding within the gospel. Mm -hmm. That those things are you glean from and you need. But his actions and falling away from the faith don't fall don't follow him in that in that manner. I like it. All right, so. Appreciate you, man. You saved my playlist. Keep me from having to purge them all out of here. Oh, whoa. Hold on. What is what is this? Oh, no. We don't need that kind of negativity up in here. Yo. I, <laughs> Christian you, R&B. Dawkins on deck. Say again? <laughs> I got that Dawkins and Dawkins on deck. Not Dawkins no. and Dawkins. Man. Oh, come on, man. Come on, Mike. Come on, bro. And some old commission. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So, no, I appreciate it. Feel free to drop any questions in the in the chat. Uh, Brandon and I will definitely be going through and parsing through them. And again, we want to encourage and I want to definitely put a pin on this that we pray for this young man. We do pray for him. Um, we don't want him to turn from Christ. We don't want that. And we want him to be restored. We want God to restore him. So we do want to pray for him. We want to in, in, encourage him to to consider, especially if he comes up and fesses up to what those those um quote unquote issues were that he had with the Christian faith. That we can really look at those and I I would really expect a lot of these things he already knew, but we want to definitely um pray for him. So I don't want it to sound like we're we're bashing him and we don't care about his soul because we do definitely care about his soul. All right, let's see what we got in here. Um, lots of people, of course, were commenting on uh, Mark's question about how to parent, which I thought was fantastic. And um, yes, there is a discussion on the Frisch perspective. I think Richard from Contra, Contra Thoughts and Tim were discussing a parody Bible translation and how flawed that is. So definitely want to check Tim out at the Frisch perspective. Let's see what we got. Let's see. Walsh, what you talk about? Thank you so much there, Walsh. Uh, what do we, did I miss something here? Developing dad? The other thing for, uh, in Go regards ahead. to uh, catechizing your kids is getting the Reformation Heritage uh, Reform Bible because mm -hmm. it has family worship in the footnotes of the Bible. So that's okay. another good um, reference. And then like, so in regards to Brady, we don't know in this lifetime, right? If he it falls in the category of Hebrews six, right? 
someone that can't be renewed to repentance, right? Okay. So we don't right. know if he's truly regenerate or not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but this is the 1689 uh, uh, chapter 17 on the perseverance in the saints, right? I love it, yes. And this is paragraph three. He says, and though they may through the temptation of Satan and of the world and the prevalency of corruption remain in them, neglect the means of their per, per, uh, preservation or forsaking the means of grace, right? You see that happen with Brady. Like he said, he stopped reading his Bible, wasn't having fellowship like that and so on and so forth. He fall, you fall into grievous sins and for a time continue therein whereby they incurred God's displeasure and grieve his Holy Spirit, come to have their graces and comforts impaired, have their hearts hardened and their consciences wounded, hurt and scandalize others, and bring temporal judgments upon themselves. Yet they will be re renewed in their repentance and be pre preserved through faith in Christ Jesus to the end. So this is what we pray for him. Yes. That that the that the seed of the gospel that was planted years ago in did not fall on hard soil, but was actually put, dealing if he's going through persecution or any hardship or misunderstanding, that we pray that this brother comes back and that he doesn't and that he forsakes all these things and runs to our savior. I love it. Yes. And that's so I want to make sure that we and I appreciate you reading that, Brandon. I know I hear your heart about it because I don't want to see anyone perish. And we definitely don't want this because he's been used so greatly in many other in many people's lives. Even Mike from Developing Daddy, he, he knows he likes that Christian hip hop. <laughs> but um, uh, even Mike, but um, to see and to hear where he is today. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely sad. And if you've watched any of the members of the Cross Movement's response videos, and of course, there's countless other people's response, and just watch his own video. It does seem sad. I mean, it's, it's, there's a level of sadness to it, even with him announcing, like, yeah, I'm denouncing the faith. Um, I believe uh, Kurt Kennedy said it was almost like he had never actually said it out loud. He hadn't gotten himself ready to say that. So... We definitely want to want to pray for him. Um, we got a question here. Let's see. If we got slow it down so we can read that question. <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, man. I'm doing my best, Walsh, to to because once y'all realize just how much I'm not handsome, how much I'm not successful, and everybody else is jet is sitting past me. I'm trying to get as far ahead as I possibly can. So that's where we are. But um, I'm trying to tell you, man, that's why I'm trying to help as many people as I can. Because once y'all realize that I ain't got nothing, I, that's it. And we're going to get we're going to get Brandon on YouTube. So make sure y'all follow him on Instagram. Leave him a message. Say, get on YouTube. Tell him that. <laughs> All right. What we got? All right. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, Walsh. You're very kind. And um. Uh, I see any other questions. I see a lot of people talking about they're picking up the Bibles. Thank you for making that rep, the Reformation Bible reference, Brandon. A lot of people picking that up. I, I don't know if we're not sponsored or anything like that, but, you know, Reformation Bible, hook your boy up. Um, there's a, quite a few people mentioning that. So I love it. I always love the, the chat, man, because some of the things that the conversations, even though we're having a discussion, you and myself, some of the conversations over here are really uh are very edifying. So lots of discussion about the scriptures, lots of discussion about how to be a parent and raise up your children in the best you can um, to help them uh, to grow in the faith. And of course, I'm trying to see if there's anything else here that maybe I missed. I don't want, if I miss anything, please let me know because I'm trying to keep up with them. But all right. So while we're talking about it, oh my gosh, is that when he's talking about Dawkins and Dawkins? I, I see what you mean now. All right. Yeah, they got they dropped three EPs just last just in 2021. Dawkins and Dawkins have been around for a while. Yeah, since 93. I, say again. 93. Yep. Yep. Because yeah. when I came to college. Yep, you're right. Wow. All right. So what are you listening to right now? 
Brandon, while we're uh, getting these questions in, what are you listening to? Uh, I listen to a wide range of music. So I listen to every genre but country. So Okay. Uh-oh. Now, <laughs> now the comment section is going to go crazy about country music. They, they uh, didn't hear I, anything else. They just heard I, except I'm country. I'm East Coast dude. I can't. Like a northeast east coast cat, I can't listen to no country music, dude. Even though I live in the south, I can't. I can't. Here it comes. No, um, it's, it's like chalkboard two. on the chalkboard again, nails on the chalkboard. I can't. Okay, <laughs> well, okay. Um, what is your favorite genre besides country music? Uh, we know what your least favorite is, so we got that part. What's your favorite <laughs> genre be- besides country music? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming right here. I knew it. No, sir. <laughs> you can you can just throw that in the trash right now. <laughs> now, nah, so, um, uh, like you know, probably R and B. Okay. I like it. I like it. There they go, man. They're going hot and heavy, man. They coming at uh, you, man. Uh, I'm sorry about I'm that. Don't don't. Smoke. Say again. I want a little smoke. And they're gonna throw all the smoke at you. <laughs> <laughs> Must sound better. Than... Oh well, well technically, okay then. Would you rather listen to country music or Chuck Pierce and his uh, random prophecy word salad? What would you rather listen to? Chuck Pierce. That's how bad it is. Oh wow. That's oh, how bad that, it is. Oh wow. I can I can I, I can filter through <laughs> through false theology. I can't filter through, dang. Uh, no, I'm not Nigerian. Uh-uh. No, nah, not at all. Nope. My um, my dad's <laughs> side of the family is Cape Verdean and Puerto Rican, so. Okay. My mom's side is uh, black, uh, black and Cuban, so. I love it. No, nope. just ignore, just ignore William. Spotify. Man, William is a, William is here. I ain't gonna listen to him. I have a Spotify. <laughs> I download all my music. <laughs> oh, we agree. No, that that's actually why we're having this discussion, Kobe, because yeah. we do believe that there is good. I believe that there's good. There can be good theology in pretty much every genre of music, not every, but pretty much every genre of music. And actually, this is what brought Brandon and I together is because we both enjoy Christian hip hop. And so therefore, that's kind of why where we got the came here. Um, this is interesting. You got any information on Zuby? You familiar with him? Clue. Okay. I, I, no I don't know him just... fully. He's a he said he seems to be a conservative. I don't know if he's a Christian, but he's a he's an artist of some sort, a musical artist. Um, and I, he seems to be real conservative. I don't again, I don't know if he's Christian, but um we'll um we'll keep on moving. So we're starting to riot. People are already getting their pitchforks out about this uh Man, come on, man. Come on, man. We, we gonna... I, got, no, I can go grab my nunchucks if it's going to be like this. <laughs> oh, I, we got you, Kobe. No problem at all. Please, if you are a content creator, please go ahead and throw your um, the name of your YouTube channel down there in the comments. Please put a little asterisk by it. We'd love to support you and encourage you, encourage people to check out your project. What man, why, What is it about why, what, it that you don't like, right? Yeah, because man, we might have to have certain camp. elements because if you don't like the rhyming, then don't read the Psalms. Because See, if you read the day. Psalms, and if you read the Psalms in Hebrew, they actually rhyme. So therefore, you get rid of it. Or is it the fact that you don't like the the boom bap or or the, the Come on, Mike. Come on. I got I dropped that for you, like? Mike. Come on, jump in. Because boom on. bap is basically essentially jazz music with with heavy bass. So like you don't listen to jazz music. And and no, and I'll give you even even more. You know where he's from? Do you know where Mike is? Where Mike lives? Where? New Orleans. <laughs> Let's see. So if, he, if he says he doesn't like jazz, there's something wrong. That's what I was like, ooh. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Jump on here, man. We're gonna talk about this, man. We're gonna straighten you out. We're gonna get you right. I'm pulling up, pulling up the Spotify playlist. We're gonna get you tight and we're gonna get you right. Jump on in here, man. You ain't doing nothing. Hey. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. He's saying that's a terrible argument. Uh oh. He calling your argumentation bad. Ooh. Oh, wow. Tell him to came up. Tell him to came up. Jump on in here. Yeah. <laughs> I love Mike. Mike is good. Mike is good, people, man. Um, but I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm asking him. He's not giving an explanation of why he doesn't like it. I don't like, I don't like country music because I don't want to hear about someone whine about their dog dying and driving a pickup truck down the street. Like, I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, let's yeah. see this right here. That's why we got Walsh online with us. That's why Walsh is here. Because he yeah. has a good perspective. He did. He does. It's the most popular music genre in the world. You know that, right? Next to jazz, of course. Thank you, Susie. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I don't know. Mike might be busy. I don't know how busy he is because he's sending us messages. But we'll <laughs> see. He knows where he knows where to find me. He knows. Maybe we'll have a, a uh oh, what we got? Maybe we have a Brent. Oh, this is somebody's question. What do we feel about reggae? Yes, I listen to Papa Son, uh, Jason Mighty, and uh, Jermaine Edwards, which are Christian uh, reggae artists. Okay, I like it. So I like I listen it. To, I listen to reggaeton too, so I listen to all of it. I listen to almost every genre except for country. Like I said, <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> I don't touch country with it. I listen to every genre of country. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Susie. Okay. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. All right. William, see, you got William the worst, man. You stealing William from me, man. When, I mean, <laughs> William's probably gonna be your first first subscriber when you join us on YouTube. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, so there we go. This is why. So he's typing. So I'm gonna let him I'm gonna let that slide. I'm gonna let that slide today. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yep, I know about Afrobeats as well. You can listen to um, I'm Rescued. Uh, who's the other guy? Caleb, Caleb Duane. Duane Caleb. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of the artist's name. I'm sorry. Oh, but I'm there, 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 there's Christian Afrobeats out. You can go to the Blessed Music uh, YouTube channel, and they have some on there as well. Okay. B L B L S S D. You can look it up on there. Okay. Yeah, like I love it. All right. Um, <laughs> it's all good, Walsh. We, wait, we... How, how you not? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How you like hip hop, but don't like R and B? Uh oh, uh oh, like, uh oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, like this. And in this corner. Come on, man. Oh, he had to go get his bow tie. That's what it was. He did. He just didn't want to be walking around here with his taco meat showing. Come on, man. Let's go. I can't hear you, man. Come on. Come clean, man. Come on. Come clean, man. Come on. <laughs> Well, here's the reason why. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's no. He said he ain't got no rhythm. <laughs> go listen to some show to see and tell me they ain't got no rhythm. Testing, testing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here, go, here it comes. Testing. All, all right. right, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, in one corner here, we have Brandon. In the other corner, we have Mike. Now, gentlemen, touch gloves. When the... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been working. I haven't been working on my ring announcers uh, shtick in a while. So, all right, here we go. He's 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 getting his um, drink. He's clear. So, go first. First, let me let me ask a question. So, your reason behind uh, not liking country is that you don't want to listen to. What, can you repeat that reason? <laughs> I don't want to listen to people driving their pickup trucks with a back with a shotgun in the back with a dog whining and humming mm -hmm. because their girl because they broke up with their girlfriend. Now that you know that's a hasty generalization fallacy, yes, right? Yes, because that's yes, okay. Yes, I'm just, yes, I'm just all right, I'm okay. 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 Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Because <laughs> if I give my reason, 
Like I was out my my character was impugned, right? <laughs> well I like Jason Jason's up here impugning my character. <laughs> wait, 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 what talk what about talk about I'm New Orleans I'm from New Orleans and, and, and you know how crazy it is that I might not no. like jazz. <laughs> no, I just wanted to. But I just wanted to smoke you out, man. I was smoking you out, man. It's my. I know. I get it. Just like Seiko did with uh with Marcus Rodney. with another person, right? Another person. I get it. I get it. I get it. Well, you got me up here. You got me to stop working <laughs> to go get to your bow tie, in. right? And then no, jump the, up on no, the... no, I always the Tuesday is definitely bow tie day because that's when we teach. I teach at the classical school, so I got you. Yeah, I got Tuesdays you. and Thursdays, bow tie is definitely on. The only day I don't wear a bow tie is Saturday, but. Unless I'm doing a live and then I'm wearing a bow tie. Yeah. So almost I love seven it. days a week. But I love it. So the reason why, I mean, you can probably guess why I don't like uh, rap music. Right. If you if you if I, I probably just said it, I'm more of a fan of classical uh, jazz R&B because I grew up on that. Now, I grew up in the I'm, I'm around I'm a little bit younger than Jason, but I did grow up around uh, rap music. Uh, New Orleans rap during the, during the heyday of Juvenile and, and Lil Wayne. I actually went to high school with Lil Wayne. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm familiar with all of those guys. I just don't like the music. I don't like the style. I don't like. Yeah, I just don't like it. Well, so I, it's just certain, a preference. There's certain hip hop that's pulled from jazz, like old school boom bap. Mm -hmm. Like I talk about like um, what's it? It's jazz hop from like '93, '94. Send me, send me some. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not saying I can't be swayed, but you send me some music and I'll listen to it. And I yeah. actually post hip hop for people who like it. Like if I if I find it to be theologically so solid, I'll mm -hmm. post it because I know people like it. But I don't mm -hmm. like it. Like I don't yeah. listen to it. I Is listen it to lyrics? classical jazz, old school gospel. Um, yeah, I don't even like like the new stuff in in the, in the you know yeah yeah. Uh, what else? I, I guess that's that's pretty much what I listen to. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else? Jazz, uh, old school gospel, uh, R and B, old school R and B, not new, not new stuff. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah. is it is it the musical content or the lyrical well, content? That's that it's a lot of like? it's it's a lot of uh. So it 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 started off like if if you're younger. And you're listening to the lyrical content that becomes your framework for what what the music is right um so the lyrical content is not something that um i was a fan of growing up so then the lyrical content becomes associated with the beats so then you have an, like the like the actual style of music mm -hmm. and then you're like oh okay well i don't like this style of music right i just and it just becomes a preference so I'm not saying that there, there's no, there is no intellectual reason. Like, I'm not going to sit down and go through a bunch of points. This mm -hmm. is purely preference, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not even saying, like, I'm not saying that, I didn't say that it was, well, I did say it was trash. Didn't I say it was trash? I did say it was trash. That was, that was just a, a kind of ribbon a little bit, but I don't like it. And, and it's very, like, I don't think that's going to change. Just like, kind of like you don't like country. You don't really have a... Your your reason wasn't that valid. Like if you had said something, about, you didn't say anything nah, about the, nah, the, in the, the. In all seriousness, in all seriousness, okay. I didn't. I never grew. I, I'm from the northeast. I mm -hmm. grew up in Providence, Rhode Island. Right. I'm 30 yes. minutes from Boston, an hour from New York. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of. I grew up in the middle of the high, the golden era of hip hop. My dad, my dad is was a DJ. Right. Yeah. From, from Tobo, so like was a DJ. So I had all these records. Like. So Cause when my my mom was a Christian, she got saved when I was like four. But when I would go to my dad's house, I'd be in the digging in the crates, boy, and I would listen to everything, everything. I'm just sitting there playing Super Nintendo, sitting there yeah. in the records. So that's why, like, and then I'm like, that's not a sound I'm familiar with. And then when I got introduced to country music, I was like. Get this cornball stuff out of here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> real, like, it's just, it's not. It's a it's a lyrical content relatability thing. Mm -hmm. That like it. and then sound wise, it sounds too whiny. Mm. Gotcha. So I can't. I, it's just like it's an irritating sound to me. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I actually I actually listen to country 
like maybe 10, 10 years ago. It was when I was married and I'm, my, my anniversary is this week. So it's probably like maybe seven or eight years ago for the first time really listening to it, just listening to the lyrics. And it, I, I was like, oh, this is not that bad. I wouldn't listen to it. Like I wouldn't make it a daily diet or anything. But it, I think it also points to the, uh, highlights the fact that we, early on, whatever we're trained with early on, it becomes embedded in us. And it even goes back to your point, our, your point about catechizing your children, right? Getting that information in them early. You were catechized to love yep. hip hop. I was catechized to hate hip hop. No, nah, not necessarily. Right. Because let me say this, right? My mom was like one of the hardcore G. Craig Lewis people in the late 90s, early 2000s. When mm -hmm. came out. Don't tell Seiko. And <laughs> no, I'm tell Seiko. Like super, super hardcore to the point where all the Christian hip hop stuff went out the window. I'm like, yo, mm. where did my cross movement CDs go? Like, <laughs> this, this is what you tell me I can listen to. And I'm like, that joke's gone now? Like, come on, man. So. And then, so the, all that stuff, everything's the devil kind of thing. So, so what happened? So you, but you said that your dad was a DJ, right? And you listen, you went through and listened to all of his stuff. That was prior to the G. Craig Lewis stuff, right? Yes. yes. And that's what I'm saying. Like as a youngster, you got you, you were drawn to it. You were catechized early by those records that your dad had. That your dad was a DJ, and then you know most bo most boys gravitate towards what their dads like. And that was that's what I okay. meant by you were catechized by it. Meaning, even if your mom had said, even if your mom tried to get rid of all your albums, you were still going full bore into that. That's what you have been catechized with as a young child, yeah. and that's what that's the point that I was making. Yeah, that's so my grandmother. Green. My grandmother put that those things in my ears too. Like she, my grandmother loved metal, dude. Mm. Like. No, I'm like, grandma I'm was like, getting down. I'm grandma about like, was about that life. Like Jimi Hendrix and like oh good wow. guitar playing, like good like so not like heavy metal, like 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 but I was talking about like more like good heavy guitar playing music and stuff like and stuff on that line. So I that's why I gravitate to that and then listen like going to my aunt's house that wasn't converted, that was sitting there blasting Joe Dice, then uh -oh. Drew Hill. Dang, all those old school uh, R and B groups. So that's yeah. a big influence over my life. So I'm gonna answer one know. question, and then I got to get back to work because I have to pick my son up in an hour. Uh, all right. I'm 43. 43. They were you were asking to people to guess. Wait, the wait, wait. Answer. So you're saying you're you're younger than me? I said that. I said <laughs> I'm a little bit younger than you. Wait, how old do you think I am? You told me how old you were. You're 47, right? Oh, I did tell you. Okay, cool. All right, I was just trying to play you. <laughs> Bruh, my how medicine. You know, how did my you medicine think I knew off. exactly how? Like, how did you think I knew that I was younger than you? Because you told oh, me. Right, I, I'm, not, I'm not a prophet. I ain't Marcus Rogers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. See hey, check later. it out. Hey, be good, man. <laughs> Raise a peace, friend. All right, so that was fun, man. I'm glad to have him stop by and have a little bit of chit chat about music and uh, how we've come to uh, understand and appreciate and and because music is a big deal and and not only in our culture, not only in in society, but I think I think we can say music is definitely a uh, a big deal globally and, and across societies and across cultures. So it's cool to hear how people come to like what they like, which is fine. And there have been some really interesting comments about music. You might have to go back and uh, check out these. Uh, there have been some suggestions, too, that, that have kind of slipped past me. There was one I didn't, I wasn't certain I knew what this was. And I don't know if you saw it. It was this right here. I don't, are you familiar with this? What is this? I'm um, Rescued. Okay. Who, who is that? That's a, a Afro Beats uh, artist, Christian artist. Okay. There, there you go. See, don't be playing with him, Nakeem. He know what he's talking about. He <laughs> look, don't be trying to throw no curveballs up in this. Ain't no trivia hour. Yeah. No, we got this, man. No, that was great. Thank you, man. Oh, he Limo Blaze. That's the guy's name. Lingo Blaze? Limo. Limo. Like Limo. Limo. Yeah. Limo Blaze is one of them. The Afro Beats guy. That's okay. I love it. But um, well, Brandon, again, let's just wrap it up. We were discussing, we were having a conversation about uh, Brady Goodwin, formerly known as The Fanatic, 
and what happened with his denunciation of the Christian faith. And I thought we had a good conversation discussing what what is biblical salvation and what is biblical, uh, what is apostasy, what is turning away from the faith. And though we don't know, and we we don't know if he was ever regenerated, and this is just a really bad spot in his life, and he's the Lord is going to pull him back, or if he was never regenerated to start with, that's not what we actually know. And the Lord ultimately will know, ultimately knows that. Um, we also talked about what were the reasons, because that was a big takeaway from my video and other people's videos. They didn't really know what was his reasoning, and so we found that in his uh, conversation with Vocab Malone, and. I, I I don't know. I'll speak for you. I will speak for Jason. I don't think those were good reasons. Not not in light of who Christ is, what he did for us. I don't think those are good valid reasons. Um what, what do you want to say what you think about it or is that about the same or what? It's the same. Absolutely. So um he did give some reasons. I'm sure they'll probably get fleshed out more over time. Um, and of course, like we said, he has a book coming out. I'm sure he'll start, I don't know, doing the circuit because apostasy does sell. So he'll probably get out there on the circuit and start sharing more. And hopefully the things that he's saying of the reasons why, um, hopefully are, are, are going to be things that Christians, that maybe the people watching this video can say, yeah, that's not going to be a reason for me to turn, turn my faith. Yeah. Okay. Textual criticism, yeah, nah, Christ was too good. Um, morality and ethics in the scriptures, yeah, nah, I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Yeah, I'm not going to turn my faith in that. Um, so I'm hoping that that will be the be the case. And, um, and then, of course, last week, start chopping it up about what you're listening to and such like that. What is this guy talking about right here? Okay, so Edwin is a, a great brother up in New York, uh, a pastor, and he and I are going to actually be doing a discussion on worldviews in a, in a while. Hey, we want to jump in? You got some time? What genre is it? Um, oh, yeah, what genre is that? But Edwin, jump in if you, if you got a second. But, um, yeah, I, I, yes, Violet. And Violet is another Christian YouTube content creator. Please make sure that you check out her channel, which is Berean Babes. And yes, I mean, five years of not reading the Bible or not reading the Bible um, intensively, studying it, yeah, that's going to lead you here. And I, we actually saw that and heard that in Ishan's story as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely. If you if you got some time, Edwin, you want to jump in real quick and talk about what we're going to be discussing or whatnot? If not... He said for his namesake, it was the name of the group, right? Uh, let me pull that back up real quick. I'm sorry. Yep. For his namesake, Fire Christian Artist. Edwin has good taste. So if he said that, then I believe he's probably, he's going to be probably somebody that you want to check out. Yeah, I just but, added it. And just in case you don't know, Eric Smith, servant of Jesus Christ. Look at this guy. What is this guy doing? What's happening, man? What up? What's up? I just want to say, man, we have some great beards on this show today. <laughs> we got you and Brandon. We have Mike coming here, man. This is the well-bearded brothers. I got to go something. to you. I can't grow facial hair for nothing, dude. Well, you know what? We get paid. You in the family, man. You in the family. What's happening, man? Mr. Ramirez. What What's up, going man? on? What's up? What's going on, y'all? Hey, man. So, oh. um... I was able to listen to some of your conversation. Yeah, man. Do you want to add two cents to it, man? We make a make a dollar, man. You got any any opinions or or whatnot? Um, I I think. Can you hear me clearly? We hear you perfectly. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. I think um these these sorts of things that take place they're not new, mm -hmm. um, but they I think the Lord allows them to uh. There's it's multifaceted reasons, right? But one of the lessons we can learn as Christians is that we need to hold fast to our faith. And yes. these sorts of things that take place, they they remind us of how sweet the Lord is. And they remind us of um, his keeping power, right? Amen. Um, you know, you can be the most brilliant person or the most articulate individual. But 
if the, and if the Lord doesn't keep you and you're not His, then then mm -hmm. you you'll be swayed, you know, and you'll you'll abandon the faith. So, I think these kinds of things should buckle us down. And uh, man, praise the Lord for His keeping power, you know. Amen. That's something that Tonic actually said. Because oh, you he beat said, me to it. Uh, <laughs> yes, go ahead, go ahead, man. You got it. Not because uh, Tonic sat there and said, "Hey, yes, Brady fell away, but." The other eight of us are still professing Christ and holding fast to Christ. Like mm -hmm. DJ official held on to Christ until that he passed away. Same thing with Enoch and the other other members across the movement are still holding fast to the Lord. So it's it's a beautiful thing to see God staying hand and, and keeping hand and see that He doesn't let go of those who are His. Yes. Amen. And I'll I'll even go one step further and just say that in your church. In your community, you can look around and you know people who are who are staying fast, who are or who are feeling and, and experiencing discomfort. And it would be easier to to turn their backs on Christ and and enjoy the the pleasures of this world, but they're still staying fast. So yeah, this is a, a grandiose um, you know, celebrity that's rejecting Christ. But man, y'all, 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 y'all in the chat for crying out loud. I mean, you all are holding fast. I mean, Having you all as my brothers in the faith encourages and edifies and builds me up. So, yeah, Fanatic did turn his back. But you know what? I got Brandon. I got Edwin. I got countless others in the in the chat. And they're holding fast. And, and to me, that's just as powerful as every member of Cross Movement, as, as every celebrity Christian that denounces. I, I got brothers and sisters I lock arms with. So that would be my little two cents. But um, yes, yeah, good. I love it, yeah. man. With that, go ahead. Go Just ahead. one more, one more thing with that, man. You think about, and I don't know if you guys talked about this, but you think about um the the, the testimony of scripture, right? You think about Peter, um, you think about Job, right? Like these these individuals. Um, it was uh Hank Hanegraaff that said this back in the days, uh, before for his own little episode. Yeah, yeah. He he had this statement that said. Uh, Christians may fall on board, but they'll never fall overboard. Correct. And that just, that always stuck with me, man. Like we, you know, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Mm -hmm. um, so, so God, God oftentimes, man, allows hardship and trials. Like those are the means that he uses to strengthen our faith. And yeah. when somebody veers away from the faith, um, you see that the trials and the hardships actually, um, like like it says in uh, I believe it's in the book of John. Like these people are apostates, right? They, they're um, they're cut off from Christ. So it's just amazing, man, how the Lord uses hardship to strengthen His people. But then hardships are also the means by which people who professed Him turn away from Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like John Mark, like yeah. as John John Mark dealt with persecution, went away for a little bit, and then put. And then uh, Paul receives him back after he goes and professes faith again. Great points, guys. Hey, now this one is a, a, a do, do I got a little bit of time with you, Edwin? Yeah, I got a couple minutes. Okay. I don't know where y'all are with media or like with with television, with uh, television shows and, and the such like that. So here's a good question. Um, this is not a music question, but a media question. What do you think about The Chosen, the television show? Uh, series the chosen um I don't know it is. okay are you familiar with the edwin or yeah I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with it i haven't watched so i actually i actually brought this up to a brother that i know who's all about the chosen mm -hmm. um and i said to him and the reason why i looked into it is because i had a couple people just tell me you gotta watch the chosen yeah, gotta it watch really that. makes it really makes the bible come alive and whenever yep. i hear that phrase um, it, it it makes me uneasy because the word of God is alive and nothing mm -hmm. can make it come alive. Right. Come um, on. so I started looking into it and, you know, I started seeing some really skeptical things about it. Um, the, the producer of the show has no problem embracing and conflate Christian Orthodox doctrine with Mormonism. Right. Um, so I started seeing some of those things. So I haven't, but, but my, but my testimony was discredited because I haven't seen the series so apparently i have to okay. see it in order to critique it <laughs> okay well i will go i'll go step i will give you a pass because richard from contra thoughts has watched them all 
and he's done survey, he's done a conversation about it, and he said the exact same thing. Um, mm. So, no, I, I heard it called this, Christian fan art. Like, it's, just, it, it, it's, it's art from a fan, and they claim it's Christian. So I heard, I, I've heard that it, it, it is well, well produced, well acted, but somebody said right here, Walsh, there's a lot of unnecessary assumptions. And yeah. so you can take it or you leave it. I don't think your your faith will be shipwrecked if you don't watch it. I don't think if you yeah. just watch it as, again, it's fan art. But again, you just keep mindful. As you said, the word of God is alive. We're not making the word of God alive. It's like Brandon is right there alive. I'm not making him more alive. So, yeah. so but yeah, that was a good question though. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and it shouldn't be a substitute for reading your Bible, you know? Right. Like these these movies that come out or shows, however well produced they are, um, there's nothing there's nothing uh, more realer that for the Christian than reading the words of God in the Bible. Um, you know, like that that is, I mean, Peter said that right. He says, "Yes, we have a word. More we have sure. a more excellent witness." Like, yes, to this script. I love it. Okay. Other well, thing is, good. I would. I would say, because I just looked up, Googled it real quick to look at the thing, the pictures of it. But the fact that they're breaking the second commandment of making images of Christ, we don't know what he looked like. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting here putting, uh, saying, this is what Christ looked like. Now you have an idol to a certain extent. Because, because, because like the second uh, commandment basically imposes, say, hey, do not create a image of God. If it was necessary for us to have images of who Christ looked like, it would have been in our Bibles. We see who he is in his, in his character and his nature through the word. Okay. And, and we sit there and see that he is everything that we ever need. But 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 in Revelation, see, it said his hair was like wool <laughs> and his feet were like, okay, we're going to say that. <laughs> Revelation. Uh, I'm going to say, we're going to save that one because. Uh, I have to admit, I haven't. I don't hear that argument that often anymore. Used to hear it a lot. I used to hear it a lot. I don't hear that argument anymore. I wonder is because people re finally realized what similes were, the word like and as. I think they probably realized like, oh, this doesn't work. But I don't hear it as much as I used to. It used to be every every day. But um, I just think that's funny. Um, so, oh, now they're talking about the passion. I was like, man, yeah, I, I agree with you. Brandon, you make a great point. I mean, we do put ourselves into some deep waters by doing that, and it's unnecessary. That's the, the thing I think we really have to realize, because if God wanted us, and it was tantamount to know that, the Lord would have told us, this is what he looked like. This is how, what his hair texture was, if it was necessary, <laughs> if it was really necessary. But you're right. Like, we know all the things that are necessary about our Lord, and and how tall he was, and how how dark his skin was, it's complete, must not be that important. Or the Lord would have told us that. He would have given us that. I like that. Good perspective. One thing of reference that people can use is, um, is Albert Martin's sermon on the Passion of the Christ um, in regards to watch, should a Christian watch the movie or not. And that's what convicted me on in not watching Christian movies that, put Christ in the pictures. I'll watch like the stuff like about the acts and stuff like that, or no Mo, Moses, Noah, something like mm -hmm. that. But I won't watch things in pertaining to Christ because I, and, because when you listen to the sermon, he breaks it down very thoroughly of like all the scriptural things that you are breaking by watching them in the film. And it's not being wow. legalistic. It is literally just going through the text and it was right. so convicting. You know, it was like, it's like because you, now you're looking at that image and praying to that image to a certain extent. I, I consciously without knowing. Yeah. Now you're thinking that's what Christ looked like, and you're based, therefore you're worshiping God through an image. But I'm not gonna get like diverge into it more thoroughly, but just go listen to that sermon. No, um, can you put that in the chat with the d description of it in the comment? And that is interesting because um, you hear people off time saying that. Uh, you're praying to a a uh, Caucasian Jesus or whatever like that, and you're like, come on, man, it doesn't make no sense. But I mean, it does makes it does make sense when you think that 
we do put them in art and such like that, even though my church and probably your church as well, Edwin and, and Brandon, we don't have that kind of stuff. We don't have typography and icons in my church. Um, we don't have pictures of Luther either. We don't have pictures of Calvin. <laughs> we, don't, we barely got pictures of, of, of the deacons and elders up in that piece. So, um, but yeah, so I, but when they go too far, they do a lap too far. And I agree with you, man. Excellent. Edwin, you doing anything, any other projects or anything new coming up that you want to talk about? Or I see you got your Jets. Are your Jets doing okay? Don't turn this into no football show. <laughs> no, I want this to be an optimistic conversation. Let's not go to the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, as far as as far as projects, really, man, just got a lot going on at the church, you know. Okay. Um, preparing a series in the book of Colossians um, okay. here in a couple of weeks. And uh, my wife's getting ready to have our fourth child. Amen. So we are uh, yes. just kind of preparing ourselves for that best we can. Um, and then uh, you and I got a project coming up here soon. Yes, we do. We're going to be talking about some and, world views. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. So I'm looking forward to that. And man, yeah, just trying to, just trying to get settled. Really. There's a lot going on here. Uh, you know, just kind of pastorally and family. And so in between that time, trying to, uh, trying to record uh, podcasts. <laughs> I, I totally understand. And we look, man, we're glad to have you. I appreciate you stopping by. I know, yeah, brother. I know life is busy and I wanted to make sure everybody's giving you shouts out and congratulating you and the family for the beautiful addition. Is it a boy or a girl? What is it? It's a girl. Yeah. It's a girl. All right. Yep. Baby All right. Lydia. All right. I love it. So I want to make sure that we, we give you a shout out. Um, please, if you have not, please check out the Proverbial Life podcast. Um, Edwin is doing fantastic work over there. Um, and you might see him driving, but I can I have it on good authority <laughs> that he is not holding the phone in his hand anymore. Anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't go back to some of them old episodes, though. Um, so I have so, so just a brief, brief comment on that. Um I used to I used to have a phone mount, and then it okay. broke. Okay. And then I I got so I, so I started holding my phone while I was making videos. Well, a guy right big mistake right. So then a guy at my church pulled me to the side, Amen. and said, "Got to stop doing that." <laughs> and and then I realized, wow, like I forgot that people in my church watch me. Right, right. It. And you know here I am like breaking the law, holding my phone. <laughs> oh, you... So, so I, so I got a, I got a, a, at another phone carrier the I next day. And, uh, so, so yes, I, I, I keep it on the dashboard. So I'm not holding my phone anymore. I love it. I love it. So yeah, check out the per proverbial life, check out what he's doing. Edwin and I will be discussing worldviews in a, in a couple of weeks, uh, having a deep dive into that in response to, um, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson and his, um, diatribes about uh, religion and how we can be religion free and still have a, a moral mm -hmm. worldview. I don't even know how that works, but, um, awesome. and, and I know, right. Your face is looking <laughs> Brandon. Maybe, we, Hey, we might jump. We might have you come in too. I mean, it's going to be fun. And that's just going to be a, a, a very interesting conversation because his, uh, his, uh, devotees have been in my comment section. I love them. God bless <laughs> them. And, uh, they, uh, they're sharing their ideas and their thoughts, which is perfectly fine. Keep it respectful and keep it short. And that's all I need. But um, so everyone and, be with us. Go ahead. And, and that's good, brother, because that's the you know, that's that's our desire. Right. Like you said mm -hmm. in that video, we want to make disciples. That's it. And uh, if that's what's going to draw them in to listen to the content and we show them Christ, Come praise on. God. I, I, and, and I'll tell you about it later, but because uh, I don't want I'm putting a new video up. I had to. I had to do a video about that video because it had become, I'd never had a video pop off that quickly. Uh, the amount of views that went out of there and the views you can see in the analytics. I was like, this video has gone insane. I'm wow. going to have to do another. I'll have to do another one and two more. But um, yeah, so Edwin will be here. Please, everybody, Reform Tosin on Instagram. Brandon is on Instagram. Um, prayerfully soon, Brandon soon, Maybe we'll get him over here on this uh, YouTube channel causing trouble with us out here. But please check him out on IG for sure. And um, I appreciate him coming by. Edwin, brother, I appreciate you stopping by, uh, you. rapping with us. 
everybody, you all are um, in, in the comment section. You all are fantastic. I thank you all. If you could, please give me that three piece special. Give me a like, a share. Give me a comment down below what you thought about the conversation. Should Brandon, what should Brandon name his YouTube channel? Let, let us know in the comment section since <laughs> we're going to try to get him to start his YouTube channel. But what should he name it? And then, of course, please, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. I'm looking forward to talking with you down in the comment section. So in the meantime and in between time, by God's grace, next time, everybody, we'll see you soon. Grace and peace. Mm -hmm.